So let's look quickly at using the Rails console. If you haven't done so already, you should have ran bundle install to install all the necessary libraries for your Rails application. The next step then was to create an actual model in Ruby on Rails called product, which we did over here. So here, we, that's the code to create a product that has a name which is a string, a description of text, and a price, an integer, to store numbers like 7 or 17. Once you've done all that, you run rakedb migrate, and that will actually set up the database for a product. Now that it's done, we could play around in the Rails console. So to do this, you could type in Rails console, or just Rails C for short. This will open up the Rails console. You can now look, type in product, and it, you'll see that it recognizes what product is. So let's create our first product. I'm going to create a cow. We use the command create to create it in Ruby and save it to the database. This creates a cow description. It moves and it costs 25. We see that it says insert into and then commit transaction. That means that it was actually saved into the database. So now that that's done, we could go and call up the first cow and over the first product and it'll return that cow that we just created. And we could save it in a variable. We'll call it prod equals now prod holds the actual cow variable. So we could now do things with prod, like get the name of it, and that'll return the actual name, or we could even change the name to let's say um We'll call it, instead of a cow, a horse. But you have to be careful when you change a cow to a horse. Now that's changed in Ruby. That means in the code that we're dealing with now it's changed. But if you want to save it to the database, we have to do prod.save. And then we see again this commit transaction. That means it's actually saved to the database. When you're done using the Rails console, you could type in quit, and that will exit the console. 